Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and remember that Context is Everything Media Network. Founder and CEO John Michael is reading a textbook cover to cover. Now, I'm reading a world history textbook cover to cover that was published in the year 2002 with a copyright date of 2001, meaning all the copy was written in 2001. So it's a bit outdated, but I think it could be interesting. Context is everything. Here is a review of chapter 16 of said textbook, starting with chapter 16, section 1. I hope you enjoy. I'm going to read relaxed and quietly. Chapter 16, section 1. Original European Conquest of America. Ambient Classroom, episode 84. In 1492, Columbus set, met the Taino people in the Caribbean. The Tainos were friendly and cultivated crops, but Spanish conquistadors soon arrived, taking their gold and forcing them to convert to Christianity. Disease brought by Europeans also killed 90% of American population, Native American population in the Caribbean and elsewhere in the Americas. Spanish explorers, lured by tales of gold and religious zeal, probed the coasts of the Americas, leading to the arrival of conquistadors. Among the earliest was Hernán Cortés, who, with the help of Malinche, a Native American guide, arranged alliances with conquered peoples to fight the Aztecs. So the Aztecs, they were pretty brutal folk. And so the people who the Aztecs conquered were convinced by Malinche, who would translate for Hernán Cortés, convinced, let's rise up against your overlords, the Aztecs, who human sacrificed your people and uh, let's conquer them. It worked. Um, In 1521, Cortes captured and demolished Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital. Francisco Pizarro arrived in Peru in 1532, capturing Incan ruler Atualpa and demanding a huge ransom before inevitably killing him. Despite resistance, the Spanish overran the Incan heartland and much of South America, adding to their growing empire. The conquest was brutal and resulted in the loss of countless lives and destruction of the entire Incan civilization. Spanish, or rather Spain, acquired gold and silver from the Aztecs and the Inca, and later forced Native Americans to mine silver in Peru and Mexico. This resulted in yearly trans, uh, treasure fleets sailing from Spain to the Philippines with m- precious <coughs> precious metals. Thank you. The influx of wealth brought both advantages and challenges to the European economy. That was section one of chapter 16. Section two of sa- chapter 16, episode 85 of the Ambient Classroom, is titled... Spanish and Portuguese colonize the Americas. In the 1500s, Spain established a vast empire divided into five provinces. New Spain, Mexico, and Peru being the most important. To maintain strict control over colonies, Spain set up a Council of the Indies to pass laws and appoint viceroys and audiencias to rule in its stead. So, viceroys, meaning side rulers, would rule in the Americas on behalf of the Spanish leadership in Spain. The Catholic Church played a key role in the colonies, working with the government to convert Native Americans to Christianity and imposing European culture over their own. Spain closely controlled the economic activities, especially trade, allowing colonists to export raw materials only to Spain and forbidding trade to other European nations or even other Spanish colonies. During colonization of the Americas, um, uh, Bartolomé Las Casas condemned the system of enslavement of the Native Americans called the Encomendia, 
He called for new laws of the Indies in 1542, which forbade the enslavement of new Native Americans, but many were forced to become peons anyway, creating debts that they could never pay off. During the colonization of the Americas, Las Casas, Bartolome Las Casas, uh, urged colonists to import workers from Africa to fill the labor shortages, citing their immunity to tropical diseases and skills in farming and mining and metalworking. However, he later regretted this advice as it contributed to the brutal African slave trade, which we will go into more detail about in a future section. Keep listening and you'll hear it. In 1494, Portugal became uh, was claimed by Brazil under the Treaty of Tordesillas and issued a land grant to nobles and to develop and share profits with the crown. Brazil lacked the instant wealth of other native um, uh, South American states uh, because of its lack of silver and gold. So settlers clung to the coasts and exported Brazil wood, later turning to plantation agriculture and cattle raising. That was chapter 16, section 2. This is chapter 16, section 3. Again, this is a quick review. If this is your first time to the channel, I will get to fully read section 1 of chapter 17 in the ensuing episode. This is just a review of the entirety of my notes from chapter 16. Chapter 16, section 3. New France, New England, and New Netherland? New Netherland? This was Ambient Classroom, episode 86. Building New France. In the 1500s, French fishing ships harvested cod off of Newfoundland, Canada. Samuel de Champlain built the first par uh, permanent French settlement in Quebec in 1608. Jesuit missionaries followed, hoping to convert Native Americans to Christianity. With Native American allies, French fur traders claimed vast territory from Quebec to Louisiana to the Gulf of Mexico. That's a lot of land. The population of New France grew slowly, as harsh climate attracted few French peasants. Canada, cold. King Louis the Fourteenth of France sent officials soldiers and settlers to strengthen royal power and boost tax revenues. However, the population remained small compared to the 13 English colonies. The 13 English colonies. The English established their first permanent colony in Jamestown, Virginia in 1607, but it was not until tobacco became a cash crop that the colony thrived. The pilgrims arrived in Plymouth, Massachusetts in 1620, though, seeking religious freedom. The pilgrims being a Protestant sect, and in England, Protestants were led by the Church of England. That was the that was the, the faith of choice, Church of England, King Henry the Eighth. So you have the Pilgrims; they're getting a little bit persecuted in Eng England. I'm not sure how exactly, but I'm sure we'll get into that in more detail as we continue on, and so due to their whatever degree of persecution that occurred in England, they said, let's go to the New World. And they did. They signed, the Pilgrims signed, the Mayflower Compact, which led to laid out guidelines for governing colony, uh, an important early step forward in self-government. In the 1600s and 1700s, the English established 13 colonies with varying ways of life. Africans were brought to the colonies and sold as slaves. Again, we'll get into that more in the next section. The English monarchs asserted control over the colonies, but English colonists enjoyed a large degree of self-government, which grew out of England's experience of representative assemblies, such as Parliament and uh, Magna Carta and all that. They happen around the same time. That's why I say that. Competing for power. In the 1600s, Spain, France, England, and the Netherlands were competing for colonies and trade around the world. They fought over territories in North America, including Dutch colony of New Netherland, New Netherland, which the English seized 
1664 and renamed New York. That's right. The English settlers in Georgia also clashed with Spanish nearby in Florida. The British and French emerged as bitter rivals for power all around the globe during the 1700s. They clashed in Europe, North America, Africa, Asia, and with the French and Indian War in North America raging from 1754 to 1763, the Americas became their new battleground. The British eventually won control of Canada and dominated North America after the 1763 Treaty of Paris. I wonder if that's why the French have a sort of nose in the air to Americans, at least stereotypically, because the French did help us in the Revolutionary War, and maybe uh, they feel like they have some responsibility for the founding of America that we don't give them as a society very much credit for, and maybe that's why they stick their nose up to us. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Impact on Native Americans. And then we'll be on to the next section. The arrival of European settlers in North America had a profound impact on Native Americans, as in Spanish America. Some formed alliances, but clashes frequently erupted as settlers claimed more land. Disease weakened and killed many, and the Native American population plummeted. However, Indian technologies, food, and medical knowledge helped shape the emerging new culture of North America. Trails blazed by the Indians became highways for settlers moving west, and many geographic features bearing Indian names. Today, many people are taking a new look at Indian religions that stress respect for the natural environment. Chapter 16.4, Turbulent Centuries in Africa. And this was episode 87 of the Ambient Classroom. European Outposts in Africa. In the 1400s, Portuguese explored West Africa, building small forts to trade and repair ships. They attacked the East African uh, coastal cities and took over the trade network. Other Europeans followed and established forts exchanging goods for gold, ivory, hides, and slaves. In the 1600s, East African coastal cities had shrunk and sunken into poverty. They'd only sunken, not shrunk. They sunk into poverty. The Atlantic slave trade. The Atlantic slave trade was a vast network that involved capturing, selling, and transporting African slaves to the Americas. The practice of slavery had existed in Africa and other parts of the world for centuries, with the word slave originating from the enslavement of Slavs from southern Russia by the Romans. So that's the etymology of the word slave, the enslavement of Slavs by the Romans. Slav, slave. The Arab Empire also used the sl- used slave labor, frequently capturing Africans. The Middle East, in the Middle East, many enslaved Africans worked on farms, irrigation projects, and other jobs, some even rising to prominence in the Muslim world. The Atlantic slave trade started in the 1500s to provide labor for Spain's American empire. European traders relied on African rulers and traders to capture slaves and take them to coastal trading posts, where they were traded for goods. So both European traders and African rulers were responsible. The Middle Passage was a terrifying experience for enslaved Africans who were packed below decks of slave ships stuffed in inhumane conditions and suffered from disease. A significant percentage did not make the journey in in that they died on the water. Some African leaders attempted to resist or halt slave trade, but the trade was too powerful for them to stop. Afonso I, the ruler of Congo in West Central Africa, sought the Portuguese's help to develop Congo as a modern Christian state, but more Portuguese came to buy slaves, which alarmed him. The Almami of Futa Toro in northern Senegal also attempted to stop the trade, 
but was unsuccessful, and inland traders found new routes to the coast. Historians estimate that about 2,000 enslaved Africans were sent to the Americas each year in the 1500s, and this number rose to 80,000 annually in the 1780s when trade peaked. There is some legislation that George Washington signed that is little discussed that was instrumental in at least slowing the slave trade. I don't have that in front of me now, but I did see it. And uh, I guess this is me being an American apologist because he did something at least saying that it's not good. But I think he also owned slaves. So, potato, potato. Not good. By the mid-1800s, an estimated 11 million enslaved Africans had arrived in America, the, in the Americas. The triangular trade involving Europe, Africa, and the Americas was a significant part of the network with port cities prosperity, depending on this slave trade. And lastly, changes in the European in Europe because of the American colonization. So this is the last section of chapter 16, and this is about how Europe was affected from their colonization of the Americas. In March 1493, a global exchange, the Columbian Exchange. In 1493, Christopher Columbus returned to Spain from the Americas with new plants, animals, Later that year, he returned with settlers and a collection of European plants and animals, beginning a vast global exchange. Europeans brought new foods to the Americas, while Native Americans introduced corn and potatoes to European, Europe and beyond. This exchange contributed to the population growth worldwide. Millions of people migrated, ideas and technologies were transferred, and language traveled, leading to significant cultural change. The Columbian Exchange had a profound effect on the world, with both positive and negative consequences. A commercial revolution. Europe's direct trade with Africa, Asia, and the Americas resulted in a significant economic change. One of the changes was the price revolution, where inflation occurred due to the rising population and demand for goods. As precious metals from the Americas flowed into Europe, capitalism grew and entrepreneurs invested in overseas ventures. Mercantilism. During the age of exploration, Europe, European monarchs sought to strengthen their national economies through mercantilism. Mercantilists believed that a nation's wealth was measured by its supply of gold and silver, and that to build a, this supply, a nation must export more goods than it imports. Overseas colonies played a central role in mercantilism. Colonies were viewed as existing for the benefit of their parent country, providing resources and serving as a market for manufactured gold, uh, goods. To achieve these goals, European powers passed strict laws regulating trade with other colonies, including restrictions on colonists setting up their own industries or buying goods from foreign countries. To increase national wealth, the government revenues, mercantilists urged rulers to exploit mineral and timber resources, back new industries, establish a single national currency, and impose tariffs on imported goods to protect local industries from foreign competition. Oh, that's it. Thank you for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. That's chapter 16. Next, we start chapter 17, which I don't know what it's about yet, but we'll see. Join me. Subscribe, please, if you made it this far. Or not. That's okay. Bye-bye. God bless.